Hey guys, it's Chris, and I'm back with James from Daily Use of Sports Trivia, and today we're going to do a little something different. Yes. So we're usually doing Q&As, but this time we want to know, why do you watch and why do you love Game of Thrones? Yes, yeah, and, and more we'll than... share ours, too. Yeah, and more than just the stories of, like, you know, how you got on the Game of Thrones or Ice and Fire and the books included, but the cultural phenomenon that it is or yes. is not. You yeah, know, it's is like that a, in our small little corner of the world, we think it is. Right. But something right. tells me it's, it's, it's not. It is a cultural phenomenon. Yeah, is it going to be, for example, bigger or as big as, say, a Star Wars or something for that, or, you know, for this generation? Yeah, and... Have um, you have to you have to give your example like you gave yeah, <laughs> me, yeah, because uh, that's true. You know, it almost this has almost been written so well that it has created a whole world. Duh, we know that, but, right? But the societies, the currency, with all the little intricacies of it, it feels real. Exactly, and that's that's kind of what started this conversation was. First of all, you know, like, how do you get into Game of Thrones? How did you start watching it? How did you hear about it? You know, that type of thing. So that's definitely interested in that for sure. But as far as the cultural thing, I think it's uh, I think it's because, like, I, I gave you the example with Star Wars. Yeah. You know, we can it. sit around as nerds and talk about, you know, some random subject like the, the company that created the twin ion engine, otherwise known as the TIE Fighter. Right. How it became used in the Empire. So, you know, and right. sit around and talk about it like it's real. Yeah. Because and it's the same as Ice and Fire. There's such a, a immense world around this thing, and it's based off real history, and it's got just the right amounts, for me at least, of magic involved with political intrigue and drama and all that, that it's almost like it's real history when you're talking about these backstories, especially. And speaking of like the engines and things like that, there are books that have schematics yes. of all this schematics stuff. Schematics. Like it's real, you right, know? Right, real companies that made these yeah. and these corporations and the, you know, the, the, the Star Wars universe. So it's, it's insane. But if we're going to talk about how we got into it, um, what? Why is it important to us? Why do we love it? Why are we infatuated? Why are we addicted yeah. to it? Why are we so addicted to it? Because honestly, for me at least, I know it's kind of wrapped around a YouTube thing for me in a way, but it's almost an obsession. And I don't know if it's healthy or unhealthy. I don't know, right. but it's almost an obsession because I go to bed thinking about not only videos, but like these these you know big time plot lines that we all are wondering about, you know, with yeah. the answers to these and, and what can, you know, what in the text, you know, supports this and that and what goes against this and that. And it's almost a, an obsession. And I think this probably a lot, it's probably that way for a lot of people, not just me. No, I'm sure. I'm sure it's like that for most everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's insane. I, um, if I, if you don't mind, you know, if I, if I start with, with mine, yeah. um, with me, Chris was in love with it already. Okay, he invite he would invite me over every Sunday night. I would get a text, "Hey man, we we're all watching Game of Thrones. You want to come over?" And I'm going, "Game of Thrones? You know, I don't. I've seen commercials, of course. Right. Even if you are not interested in it and watch it, you you know of it. You know of which it. which kind of goes into the cultural thing. Like I was saying well, yeah, a minute it ago, does. it was it that exactly. example yeah. that you brought up was you know. If you've never seen the show, you've never read a book, and you hear, or see for that matter, written down somewhere, winter is coming, that's almost as big as use the force, right. or I am your father. No. I am your father. You know, that yeah. type of thing. It, it really is. So yeah, well, is, is it going to be that big? You can compare the two because... It's not like Star Wars has dust on it. There's all oh, these no. movies coming yeah, it's, out it's, and everything. It's, it's and, been reinvigorated and, by Disney in a way, good yeah, or bad, but it has. They're, if they're on a scale, I mean, it seems to balance to me right now. Will Will this thing, if it, if we do get a Dream of Spring and the books end, and obviously the show's going to end next season, in season eight, will they be talking about this in another 40, 50 years? Exactly. So, anyway, sorry. Him you had, a, or, you had uh, a story going. It's, t it's toss up between him or L. Ron Hubbard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, he is the. I think. 
Uh, a lot of people have described him as the Tolkien of this time. I can see that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah, back to my story. He would invite me, and, and from what I remember seeing in, on the commercials and everything, I knew there were dragons. Yes. Okay? I knew there were, uh, well, you know, to me, I was like, it's about knights and dragons. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and sorcery and all this yeah. stuff. And, uh, you know, how many different ways can those tales be told? It, right, exactly. How can it capture my imagination or keep me interested? <clears throat> Not that I don't want to hang out with Chris, but usually it's, hey, you want to play poker? It, you know? it, it, exactly. We, it was all poker nights before this. Right. Was. And so now it's, hey, you want to come watch Game of Thrones? So I knew something had changed in him and something had clicked in him. And I'm I'm sitting there going, you know, I can't handle all the dragons. And stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's just too much. But I'm going to get a little personal here. I was married for, we'll call it 17 plus years. <laughs> I, was, I was with my wife for, we were about 18 years together, married for 17 plus, and... Things happen, you know, over time, and um, if I would have recorded this before tonight, I would probably throw a lot of blame on her and everything, but things just <laughs> happened, okay? And right. so, it was a it was perfect night for me to come over and get away from what was going on in my life at the time. And so, I came over, and I don't know if you remember this, but the first episode I saw yeah, right. is John coming back to life. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? Season six, he started. So everybody um, in the room, they were like yelling and loving it. And I was like, man, you know, <laughs> what's happened before this? Yeah, right. Now I'm interested. Yeah, right. Now I got to know what has happened before all this. Right. That's got everybody in this room so excited. So I watched it. I found out that there's not overkill with dragons. Right. And there's not overkill with magic and exactly. all that stuff there's really good story writing well as my marriage um started disintegrating more and more it became hey do you want to come crash on my couch <laughs> you know <laughs> right. i know you're having trouble at home my couch is available you know so i would come over here and we would start watching marathons of this stuff and i was right. catching up on it and um, and plus, you you had your own live dire wolf living here, you know, <laughs> with Rid. I do, a hundred pound <laughs> dire wolf. And between Game of Thrones, Riddick, and Chris, I have got to a good place in my life. In a nutshell, that's my that's my reason. I love it because it's helped me get through the roughest patch of my life. So, how about you, man? Tell, yeah, tell, so so me. my story, it's kind of a hybrid story because typically you get, okay, uh, I started watching the show, right? And then yes. I went back and read the books because I heard it was based off this book series called A Song of Ice and Fire. Right. Um, some people started with the books back in the, the 90s, the late 90s, and then, oh, they're making a show about it, you know, great, or I hate it, whatever. Mine's kind of a hybrid story. So I was aware, like everybody... I'd heard winter is coming. I'd heard yeah. of this, you know, you know, blonde chick with little baby dragons. Right. And um, it's funny how that is. I'd always me. enjoyed fantasy. I'm I'm a huge nerd. I mean, I've always loved, you know, but it was more sci-fi, you know, Star Wars, comics, Marvel, <laughs> DC, um, movies, uh, all that kind of stuff. Let me interject here. He's a rare hybrid. He's a jock nerd. <laughs> that's <laughs> you really I are. I think that's true. <laughs> I mean, you guys. He tells you I have my own sports. Uh, Daily Useless Sports Trivia uh, channel, which I don't mess with a lot, and I'm going to start again. But, uh, yeah, so it, it, we're talking Game of Thrones in this house or sports. So he could talk either one with as much knowledge of either one, and it's just, it's awesome. He's a hybrid. Yeah, that, I was that kid in high school with, uh, you know, I played on, I played basketball. I was the, the, the guy with the letter jacket and everything, but I didn't care about how people dress. I dressed my own way. I was just that weird You had dude. comic books in your book bag. I had comic books <laughs> and, and stuff at home. I was a weird kid, I guess. I don't no, know. you're coaching my son in basketball. Yeah, it's just and, awesome. and I, yeah, I ended up coaching softball <laughs> and basketball and, and all this stuff. And, and, and on the side, I'm a nerd. I mean, it's crazy. So it is. I'm I, sorry, I am a hybrid. But, but yeah, I think you are a hybrid. I think that's a good thing. It is. But, um... Anyway, so, yeah, I'd heard about it. I, just, I knew about it. And then uh, one day at work, and I worked at um, I worked at Microsoft before YouTube. And I was at work, and between, on downtime, I would watch Jordan videos, 
Michael Jordan clips and just old basketball stuff. You know, that's that was my forte. Shocker. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, if you knew me, you had already known that. Um, but yeah, so I would just watch little things like that. You know, I never really watched a lot of YouTube. I mean, I watched it here and there, and it was uh, mainly that kind of stuff. Right around that same time, mm -hmm. the Red Wedding happened on TV. So it blew up the internet. It yes. broke the internet the day after, apparently, because I was like, everything in every social media feed was, you know, this, that. Oh my God, could you see last night? I'm like, so I asked a coworker of mine. I said, what is up with this Game of Thrones thing? He yeah. said, dude, this is the exact quote, dude, it's fucking insane. You have to watch it. <laughs> so it was one of those days where it was kind of slow, not a lot going on on the team I was on at the time. And we went back upstairs, and I pulled up HBO Go right there. Right. And I started watching it, and once I got past the first, I was like, eh, you know, I, I, that's kind of kind of interesting. And so once I got familiar? to... Yeah, I got to three or four episodes in, and I was like, okay, I can dig this. You know, I can see. But, you know, you, you, it takes a couple episodes to get going, yeah. you know. After three or four, I was like, oh, God. Okay, it was like a binge thing. You know, I had to go back to work, but then, like, I came home and just flipped it on and started going. Just, you know, binge watching. I was like, oh, hey, I got another, another, another. You know, yeah. I was on a binge session. So, but then I started realizing, wait a minute, this is familiar, about the name, about the about the name and everything, and and like the girl with dragons, and you know this winter is coming, and and the name Stark, and all these various little things, and so after I finished the series and went back and started reading the books, because immediately I had to see like I started hearing about the books and right. you know all this stuff in the books and how there's stuff missing out of the show. Yeah, I was intrigued, and uh, I realized that after starting reading the books that I had read this before. Yeah. <laughs> so sometime during my college years, I had read A Game of Thrones. That's At least funny. that and maybe maybe A Clash of Kings. I'm not really sure, but something was familiar. So I had actually started them without really knowing what it was at the time. Exactly. And then, you know, years and years I later. I no idea what it would become. It, exactly, because I think at that point it was still a trilogy planned if it was the time I read it, which I'm assuming it was when I did a lot of reading. But anyway, so I just got into it that way, and then... Uh, I started seeing stuff on YouTube, and I was like, "Okay, that's that's kind of cool." These people are talking about their nerd stuff with, and uh, I'm trying to pull you know Chad into it, and later on it'll be you and other people. And hey, have you seen Game of Thrones? Let's talk about it. And nobody watched it yet at that point. So by God, you're gonna find somebody. So to talk about I started it. looking at YouTube, and there was people <laughs> talking about. It. I'm like, "Wait a minute, I can I can talk about this because this channel was originally going to be like everything. It was just like me going to. I was like, I'm gonna, I can do a YouTube channel. Yeah, you know, I talk a lot. I love to talk. Yeah, I can talk about sports and and Michael Jordan, and you know, uh, I can talk about my nerd stuff and comic movies and whatever. And that's yeah. that's how and political stuff even and whatever. camping and I mean everything. Yeah, everything I did, martial arts. I mean, you know, all this and stuff, and shit. and uh, I think. Uh, and then I started seeing, you know, particular Game of Thrones videos. And I was like, okay. So the first video on this channel was actually a Batman v Superman thing before they, they announced wow. it like a year before it was, you know, was going to happen. And then uh, after that, I was like, okay, I'll try to review this video. This uh, And it was Game of Thrones Season 5, Episode 4, I think. Really? Was the first That's one the first on this one. channel. That's awesome. So, and, and oh, those videos are horrible. But uh, I mean, they the, they look horrible, and I and I was still like so odd about talking. It was still odd yeah. talking to a camera in a room by yourself and nobody's home. I know. <laughs> it was weird. So <laughs> anyway, but so that's my basic story. Is you know it, I got caught up like everybody else, but at the same time I had actually read a book or two and not really known what it was. And I'd always liked fantasy, but I wasn't insane about it. I loved dragons when I used to draw yeah. back in the day. I would actually draw a lot of comic stuff. Right. Uh, Todd McFarlane was my favorite, you know, artist in, in comic books. Spider Man, all the all the main characters, and dragons. Yeah. I drew. I That's loved cool. dragons, and so, you know, fantasy wasn't my number one. I was more sci fi stuff. Mm -hmm. But there was something about Got, and this is, goes into the question we're ha asking you: What is? What do you love about it? Why is it so addictive? Well, I think it's got the right balance. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to say, well. You know, now that you've said how you got into it, yeah. now that you're into it, what keeps you coming back? It's got just the right balance for me of, like I said, political intrigue uh, and just in a little, in a touch of magic. You know, it's, yeah. it's there in the background when you're watching it exactly. or you're reading it. You're always, you always feel like there's something else going on here. And they tell us in the first scene, in the first prologue uh, for the books is 
this is what's going on, and then you kind of forget about it for a while because you learn about all these houses and characters. Yeah. And there's such a deep, rich history of the world. There's a deep, rich, um, you know, development of the characters. You really get to identify with these people. And it, there's just the right balance of everything, and there's so much intricate detail in the books, especially. The words out of my mind. Yeah, that's it's, what I was it's, it's, say. So, it's insane, and, and 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 that's where all the the details hide as far as the the clues is the like right. you said the devils in the details. Yeah, and yeah. it was just never anything like that. So it's it's odd to explain what makes it so damn addicting. And this is for another video, of course. But as we were talking about earlier today, uh, is it? The insignificant details is going to answer this, or or are they right on the right. surface? You know, like, yeah, which, which like, details are going to be the ones. Like, that... I'll, I'll give you an example right now that pops out of me all the time, and I think about it all the time. Like, I was going to do a video about it. Um, there's a a chapter in a Game of Thrones, and it's John's first chapter, and he meets Tyrion. Okay. You know, remember the scene from the show, and mm -hmm. are you Ned Stark's bastard? And it starts right. the conversation off a little awkward, but. When he sees Tyrion walk into the hall in the books yeah. to go eat with everybody, John's actually in the room and he goes outside and meets Tyrion, so it's a little different. But when he sees Tyrion walk in, he sees Tyrion walk in and it's described that Tyrion's shadow is as large as a king's. And it's like, okay, why did he say that? Yeah, why did he word it like why that? Why did he word it like that? Like, for once, Tyrion Lannister looks like a king, essentially, as far as his height, being a dwarf and all that stuff. And it's like, right. okay, that kind of stuff right there is what makes this shit. That's a so great example. unique. Great example. Because you're thinking the whole time, right then you kind of overlook it, but as you get into the details and start hearing theories, and I think this is what's really going on, you start thinking about those little lines. Yeah. You know, man. those little tiny, just it's just one sentence and one paragraph in a book with a thousand pages. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like there's so many of those. Anyway, well, that's my take on it. I like uh, also with, like I was telling you too. And it kind of goes hand in hand with what you were talking about with Lucas and uh, Star Wars, is how the world that he has created seems so real. And I was it, telling it you does. that, you know, the continents, they feel real to me. Like those are real continents on the earth, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's based off Europe and he pulls from so much real history that, you know, this could be real aside from a few things like dragons yes. and White Walkers it or could, the others. It could be. It could absolutely be real because he pulls from so much real history. And the beautiful part of it is, is he mixes real history. So it's not exactly the same, but you can identify it, but he mixes it with other things. Kind of like creating the religions. It's not like he just pulled a religion straight, let's say, you know, the faith of the seven is based off Catholicism. But he mixes some other things in there, too, you know, to create this, you know, fake religion in this fake world that we all are obsessed with. <laughs> now, how much of your time do you think you spend trying to figure out how this is going to end. Man, I don't stop thinking about it. It's, that's what I mean. Is this healthy or do. not? That's, that's why I ask you that. Because, uh, and that's Every the thing. day you get a new tidbit from Chris. It's like, <laughs> you know, I was thinking about something. And it's, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's, never it's, it's, a, it's a curse or something. It's like a blessing and a curse. I don't know, because you're always, your mind don't stop. And then, you go look something up if you don't rem you know remember a certain passage or a chapter from the books, and you go look that up, or if you don't remember it, and you're like, okay, all right, I need to go through and look for this now. And then the thing about this is when you start looking into a Game of Thrones topic or whatever, for example, if you're studying one person, if I okay. want to do a video on just like the backstory of a single character, yeah, I have to look up 15 other characters. That's true. Because there's going to be names... Yes, thrown that, in there when you're researching, right? And you need and, to go and, research and they, them, and they have affected their who they become and their backstory, and something happened to them back then or whatever. So you have to you have to go into so many other people and events and stuff. So it's just a nonstop thing. So it's like I'm always thinking about like the damn lemon tree. I guess if people watch this channel, they know I, I'm pretty straightforward about it. I think it's pretty logical. I try to take that approach. I mean, right and. You know, you're like, okay, the damn lemon tree, you know there's something to it, but it can't, you can't use it with John being somebody else's child. It, You know, because thematically uh, you know what that is, it's been revealed. Yes. So you, you got to think about it that way too. Like, it's got to fit with this, and that's how theory crafting works, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's got to fit this, and this has got to work here, and this. Oh, if you find all those pieces, then you got a theory. All those movies, when, they, <laughs> when they've got the wall with the little... 
pictures here and the yeah, little yeah, things and here and the strings. Got strings. Yeah, we're, yes. we'll end up having one of those yeah, in here before might, you know it. We, we may. We may be able to have one covering the damn, <laughs> the whole damn house. But, but uh, <laughs> anyway. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, let us know your Game of Thrones story. How Please you got do. into it. You know, uh, how, did you read the books first? Did you start with the show? Was it a hybrid story like mine? And also, what do you think is the big appeal? What What is it about Game of Thrones that, that has you so excited, that has you addicted, and uh, even obsessed, like me? I don't know. Is yeah. that, and like I said, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. In a nutshell, you know, maybe, why do you love it? Did it, help, did it help you through a time of mourning or a rough patch like I had? And, you know, I'm interested. We read all the comments anyway. So yes. I can't wait to read these kind of comments. Yeah, I mean, know? it could be something like that. It could be where it was just a time where it was something to, to, to identify with and talk to a group of people about. Right, water and, cooler and, you know, type stuff. Yeah, yeah, water cooler stuff the next day. I mean, but is it you know is it something bigger? Is it something that's so such a cultural phenomenon, kind of like Star Wars was in the 70s, 80s, and even still today, it'll, will it be talked about in 50 years? I have to ask you this before we go. Okay. <laughs> If it was not for Game of Thrones, would you still be at Microsoft? Probably. I think so, too. I think so. Probably. I think that's what got you out of there. I can't wait for Con of Thrones, but that's something else. Right? Yes, yes. We'll talk more about Con of Thrones uh, as well. So, uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments below. As usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon. And a big shout-out to my executive Patreon, Smokescreen Producers, Hall Griffin, Ball Guy 10, La La Gig, Kisa Powell, Marilyn Bentley, Mark Joseph, a.k.a. The Snow in Winterfell, Joanna, Sean Hayes, Linda Stanfield, Anonymous, and Kieran D20. Thank you guys so much. Really, really appreciate it. So let us know what you think in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to get everything, and be sure to click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.